First we need to remove the old cone and suspension components using a razor knife and a pair of side cutting pliers. Here we demonstrate what is wrong with this Digital Designs 9515. The coils should be showing 1.5 ohms each. As we can see on the multimeter, one of the coils is only showing 0.5, indicating that the coil is damaged. First we need to cut free the surround. It is made of a foam rubber and is easily cut with your razor knife. Simply cut around the edge at the seam of the fold where the surround joins onto the basket. Once you've finished cutting the surround, the entire assembly should come loose as the top suspension is now removed. Now we need to remove the rear suspension. The rear suspension is known as a spider. It is the rippled canvas. Simply cut it free with your razor knife. The spider assembly is much stiffer than the foam gasket, so take your time and be careful with the sharp razor. Once the spider is being cut free, use your side cutting pliers to cut the tinsel leads, which join the voice coil assembly to the terminals, or in the case of this digital design subwoofer, the direct join cables. Once cut, the entire assembly pulls free. Now we use our side cutting pliers to cut the direct join cables off. Now we cut off the heat shrinked and soldered ends. Then simply turn the assembly over and give the cable one good tug to pull it loose from the basket. Now we're ready to clean the basket assembly. We will be using acetone as well as a number of cutting and scraping tools. You may also find a heat gun useful for removing epoxy resins. Using the razor knife, cut off the remaining foam gasket left over from the surround. Now simply pull it loose revealing the glue underneath. We will be using acetone to soften up the epoxy resins that are used to assemble the speaker. Give the glued areas a good dosing of acetone. Whilst we are working on removing the remaining surround. Also soak the spider land area. Now using a basic metal paint scraper we can easily scrape off what is left of the foam as well as the glue that was used revealing a clean basket underneath. The spider lands on this Digital Designs 9515 is stuck in very well using a screwdriver and after soaking in acetone for a while we can easily remove it. This is the fully cleaned assembly ready for reassembly. This is your reconing kit. We have CA glue, paper for creating spacer shims, and the new cone and coil assembly. First we test fit the cone assembly which you will note does not have a dust cap attached. Now using our thin card and paper we will create a spacer. The purpose of these spacing shims is to align the center of the pole piece with the center of the voice coil. This eliminates the chances of the coil or the former rubbing on the motor assembly. 
Take your time and experiment with different thicknesses of paper. The final fit should be very tight. As you can see this is loose. Now we add the second shim which will make a nice tight fit. This will guarantee an aligned subwoofer when we're complete. Now apply the accelerator for your CA glue to the spider lands. Using your CA glue, which is available from Digital Designs or from any Loctite dealer, apply a thorough coverage over the entire spider land area. The purpose of using the accelerator is that it will increase the drying speed of the CA glue. Now that we have a good thorough coverage of glue in the spider land area, we are ready to start assembling. Insert the direct wire cables through the holes in the basket. Insert the shims into the voice coil. Now lower the entire assembly on top of the subwoofer. For good results, always check the alignment. Now that we have the spider sitting down on the land and the pole piece spaced out from the voice coil, we can attach the surround to the top of the basket. Once again, apply your CA glue around the top of the basket. Once the spider has seated, use some spring clamps to hold the edge of the surround down whilst the glue sets. You can also add accelerator to the top of the basket to speed up the process. Use at least eight, if not more, spring clamps at each of the cardinal points. This will ensure an even pressure on the edge of the surround whilst it is setting. Check the alignment of the spider and check that no glue has leaked out the sides as it is very difficult to remove once it is set. After a number of hours the glue should be set. We can now remove the spring clips. As you can see the surround is held firmly in place by the glue. Now we remove the center shim and check that during drying the alignment did not change. A smooth operation shows that you've done the job properly. Now we need to secure the direct wire cables. Using CA glue, glue the cable into the holes through the basket. A healthy drop on both sides is all that is needed. If you happen to spill any glue, clean it off immediately as it will be very difficult to remove once set.
Now apply a bead of CA glue around the edge of the surround. This is to bind the edge of the surround to the edge of the basket and also to cover up any scrape marks that we may have accidentally put onto the basket whilst cleaning it. Don't be afraid to use a generous amount of glue, as glue is cheap and reconing a subwoofer is not. And the last thing that you would want is for the speaker to tear itself apart due to lack of glue. Now it is time to attach the dust cap. This is a Digital Designs optional carbon fiber dust cap. The process is the same whether using a polymer, a carbon, or a paper dust cap. Center the cap over the top of the entire subwoofer assembly. Make sure to align it correctly, then run your bead of glue around the edge. Once you have a good even coverage around the edge of the dust cap, use something to place a small amount of weight on top of it. This could be a small book or a small amplifier. The purpose is to keep the dust cap pressed down whilst the glue sets. As you can see, we used a small two-channel amplifier to provide the weight necessary to keep the dust cap in place. Test its fit and finish. Now that the bead of glue has set, we can add some more to ensure the structural integrity of the dust cap assembly. Once again, don't be shy to add more glue than you might think is necessary, as glue is cheap and a carbon fiber dust cap is not. And here is our finished product. with smooth operation and a clean finish.